Hello, valued legionnaires and visitors to the channel. I know, I know. You're sitting there like, what? That's not Jimmy on the mic. Is this, is this Joe? Well, yes, it is I, General Number Two, coming in hot with a Critical Reviews film review. I know I have large shoes to fill, but Jimmy and I thought it was appropriate that I start getting involved with more solo CR content. Legionnaires, there would be no other more appropriate time to make my debut than now. Reason being is that today I'm shaking with anticipation to discuss my most recent picture encounter with the sci-fi thriller Alien Covenant. Perhaps this year's most anticipated film for those who reminisce on the alien pictures of old dating back to the franchise's big screen start in 1979. Director Ridley Scott has a clear eye for detail and is utilizing this film, a sequel to the prequel, 2012's Prometheus, to further feed the hunger of the true alien fans and flesh out in greater detail how the alien from the 1979 film came into existence. So for this review, I'll discuss the basic premise, the good, the bad, and try not to divulge too much detail for those anticipating seeing the film. Overall, this segment will be as spoiler-free as I can make it. So, please sit back, crack open a crisp, refreshing Canada Dry, and enjoy. So we begin aboard the colony ship Covenant, bound for a remote planet on the far side of the galaxy. The crew of the colony ship discovers what they think is an uncharted paradise, but it is actually a global graveyard, dangerous and teeming with microscopic dangers. The planet's sole inhabitant is the synthetic David, played by Michael Fassbender, survivor of the Doom Prometheus expedition. We are all aware from that film in 2012 that Dr. Shaw and David escape on an engineer's ship to seek out the engineers in their home planet. Once immersed in the experience of Alien Covenant, you quickly see moments and details that unfold to point out exactly how the events of Prometheus meld into this plot. I'm hoping that no one considers the synopsis thus far to be a spoiler, because frankly all this information is toted throughout the trailers and marketing material. All good stuff if you ask me. Back to the meat and potatoes. What did I think of the picture? What are the attributes? And what are the flat notes? So first things first, in the introduction you hear me mention director Ridley Scott's eye for detail. Let me tell you that the man's creativity oozes off the screen with every intimate transgression of the story. Scott is known for relying heavily on practical effects in physically built sets. This really stands out when you see environmental interactions, whether on the ship or the newly discovered planet being explored. Coming from a professional background in construction, I really value and awe at the detailed sets that have been constructed to give you an impression of weight and realism throughout the film's time. Not only are the sets and environments real, but Scott knows that character interactions greatly benefit from practical effects as well. Many of the creature features throughout the film are real life props constructed in eerie detail. This helps to make the viewer feel more relation to the film and keep those feelings of dread, fear, and suspense flowing through each scene. Knowing that the actor or actress in the film was helped to portray that scared feeling and those emotions because they were actually looking at the ominous drooling beast itself instead of a guy in a mocap suit or a boom with a ping pong ball at the end, really shows and adds a sense of intensity that some other films struggle to capture because of the heavy reliance on CG. It is clear that CG was utilized in the film, but only to enhance things and fill gaps where practical effects physically could not work due to limitations. But it's merely a small dose which I greatly appreciate. Just a little FYI for you related to this topic. Uh, an interesting media item to check out is a behind the scenes piece on the development and filming of the picture. This can likely be found online and it really fleshes out the details that I've just noted and discussed. I caught mine on HBO now on my Xbox app. The cast is another aspect of the picture that must be discussed. Fassbender is amazing as the two synthetics. 
Whoever thought a synthetic would be interesting, I know. The rest of the characters are appropriately cast as well. They all have their fair share of moments and give you just enough interaction to care for their well-being. The film's pace is another outstanding note. Not once did I find my interest waning. This story doesn't allow for many moments to take a breath and slow down. I started out with a full Pepsi. I walked out and it was still three quarters of the way full. Not even a moment to take a drink here, people. Ridley Scott's goal was clearly to keep the audience on the edge of their seats, and personally, I think this goal was achieved. I know that's how I felt walking away. Now, to some flat notes that slightly pulled me from the almost 100% immersive experience. There is one moment when a new alien creature emerges and has a baby chick, mother hen interaction with David the Synthetic. Eh, I won't dive into that too much as it's a bit too detailed and I don't want to ruin anything for those wanting to see it. Thankfully, this movie doesn't tote any outlandish premise like the Raptor military training bullcrap from, uh, yeah, I'm looking at you, Jurassic World. But this was close, and I'm sorry, but things like this just don't sit well with me. Continuing with the flat note theme, this film, much like 99% of sci-fi horror features, it features some flat-out poor decision-making by the characters. But let's face it, they are immersed in a new environment with many unknowns and poor decision-making is the easiest and sometimes the only way to directly put them in harm's way. My only qualm with this is I sometimes crave a bit more creativity to develop the plot situations and happenings. This film sticks to that old theme from the horror movies. Oh, hey, I heard a noise in the basement. It's dark there. Well, let me go check it out alone. Or, oh, hey, I'm going to go off alone over here where it's not safe and uh, just clean off and catch a breather. These situations never tend to end well and are somewhat formulaic. But being the devil's advocate, I understand the challenges in finding other ways to create the perfect situations for character extermination and some storyline development. As far as acts of creation are concerned, Scott has produced an alien movie for the segment of the audience that has always rooted for the monster. That's me. H.R. <laughs> Geiger's Alien is as iconic as the Nike swoosh and is flat out a sexy design that will haunt the nightmares of humankind for eternity. And you won't hear any complaints from me. This film is a brutal symphony of fire, blood, and gore that'll leave you on the edge of your seat and wanting more. So, agree with my review? Let me know in the comments below. Also, thanks to all the Legionnaires who dropped by to hear my thoughts on the picture. Feel free to like and subscribe to join our ranks. If you've already signed up, share this review with a buddy. If you're looking for an even more in-depth analysis, then check out this week's critical podcast where Jimmy and I will be dissecting the film even further. So, thanks for dropping by, and as Jimmy always says, remember to adapt and overcome. We'll see you next time.